Cool. Well, it's uh, it's 11 a.m. right now. So uh, so what do you what do you say? Shall we get started? Sure. Sounds good. Okay. Well, uh, you know, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you very much again. I know um, I know you guys are busy over there at Inertia Engineering and Design, and uh, we really appreciate you taking some time out of the day and and helping our clients um, understand what EPDM is all about and how you guys are using it. My pleasure. Um, so I did. What I ended up putting together is uh, just a bunch of questions here, and, I, and you did share some screenshots with me um, from uh, from your vault setup. So we'll talk about those as well. Um, but I thought before we get kicked into actual uh, EPDM, I thought that we'd um, take a moment just talking and having you or give you a chance to introduce Inertia Engineering and Design and uh, and the business you guys are doing. Sure. Um, yeah. So Inertia has been around for ten years now. Um, we're a contract product design, uh, prototype and manufacturing company. So uh, we work with a lot of uh, startups as well as corporations. Uh, we bring you know, products from basically an idea all the way to a manufactured product. And people typically show up on our doorstep uh, because either they, they don't have the internal capability expertise um, or they're growing extremely quickly and they need a, you know, an external team to help them reach their growth targets. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So with uh, that answer is number one. <laughs> I got lots more questions here uh, for you here, though. Um, you know, on the focus of EPDM, I thought uh, you know a good one to start off with would be you know what were the key reasons um, that you uh, that you implemented EPDM? Sure, um, we've been using EPDM for probably I think seven or eight years at least now. When it was back when it was Kinesio, and uh, at that time um, we were involved in a vehicle design project. Um, that had a number of remote teams and uh, a, you know a large number of components and parts and and um, having been through projects like that before without it, some kind of data management system, um, I knew that I needed something to coordinate and manage everything um, uh, efficiently. Otherwise, there was going to be some um, large large headaches for managing files and data and revisions and things like that. For sure. Good. Well, that, that's pretty typical with a lot of our clients. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully that resonates with some of the guys that are online today. Um, you know, I guess as a, as a next step, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious about how much, how long did it take to set up and how much time do you typically spend administering the system? That's a very common question that we get and uh, no, nothing better than having a customer <laughs> help out other customers with, uh, with what, that, what that takes. Yeah, um, if I remember correctly, because it was some time ago, um, you know, Wayne came to our office and it was uh, it was about a half a day, I think, to get everything up and running. Um, you know, and then uh, as far as administering, um, you know, over the years, um, I guess day to day we probably spend maybe a couple hours a month um, doing things like um, you know adding a new user or changing permissions. Um, maybe if we have a new client come on board, they have a s specific uh, part numbering system, we'll have to set up a new serial number, but it would be a few hours a month maybe. Um, and then maybe you know, once a quarter we'll do uh, some kind of project where we're maybe creating a new form or template and we're you know, building in some automation to that. So it's, it's not a lot of time. Yeah, that's, that's not uh, a lot at all. Actually, I think that's probably um, even less than I hear a lot of the clients spending. I think it's quite common for customers to spend you know, an hour or two a week because they're always trying to get, you know, that next thing. But it could very well be that you've just been using it for so long that uh, um, that it's just so established, right? Because there's kind of little mm -hmm. stuff that you yeah. probably need to do. Okay. Sure. Um, on the, so a, a common thing that we do when we're setting up clients is just help companies um, try to visualize how best to get organized. So we do have um, some standardized ways that we've been helping customers with that. Um, but a lot of that has evolved since we set you guys up a long time ago. So you guys have probably, uh, you probably have a little bit different than what we typically do. Um, but I thought it's always nice to see how, how, uh, how you're set up. So could you maybe explain um, how you're organized with your folders? And I do, I think we have a screenshot here as well. There we go. Sure. We'll share the screenshot for everybody to see. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, everything we do is outside, out in the vault. Um, nothing gets done outside the vault. And uh, because we're a services company, we deal with all, you know, a large number of external companies. So we, um, we have a you know, short uh, acronym, I guess, or, or for each client. Um, and that fold, you know, you can see the folders down. We have a three-letter um, short form for each client. Inside that, we've got a standardized uh, product. Every, every one client folder has a project. 
um, with the client uh, prefix and then a project number, which is just a serialized number. Um, and that just pulls from the serial number of the PDM and then uh, the project's uh, description. And that gets launched automatically. And under that, we've got standard folders like design, engineering, um, incoming outcome, outgoing project management. And those all just get deployed as soon as we launch the project. Um, okay, cool. Uh oh, other calls coming in. <laughs> um, so do you uh, and you you mentioned to me that this is uh, a standardized on a on a template, right? So I think the screenshot shows yeah. you launching a template here as well. Um, I would imagine that that probably helps out quite a bit to keep that all all uh, looking nice and tidy. Um, you know, just a a question about the company. Um, you know, has the I know that uh, you've been using it for a while. I'm just curious about the company history, and maybe you can t uh, share with uh, with everybody. Um, you know the size of company you were when you started EPDM, and uh, and the size of the design team today. Sure. Um, so when I when we per, first purchased EPDM, um, there was only two people in the company actually, and uh, we were working with a few outside teams as well that would uh, that we brought in remote, you know, remote, remotely and allowed to be PNN. Um, but I, you know, I previously to starting the company, I worked in design teams of you know, twenty. 30 people, and so I, I, I knew what, and without a data management system, so I kind of knew uh, how not to do it, how not I want to do it. So um, with that, we've, uh, we've been able to, uh, you know, we've, we've grown to about 12 people now, um, and we do have, uh, you know, remote teams uh, in, in China that work with us. Um, and what it allows us to do, the, I guess the templates, the automation, and the standardization allows us to get, um, you know, people up to speed very quickly uh, on how we do things uh, at inertia. So the growth, you know, it's easier when you bring a new person on because you've got uh, standardized you know, methods and that's easily easy to describe and people know exactly where to find things um, a lot easier. Yeah, so you, you're already going ahead and answering my next question there. So it, so, it sounds like Sorry EPDM, that. uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> uh, it sounds like EPDM did help with the growth of the company, like it was a little bit easier to ramp up and get new people uh, um, on board with processes. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we do have a training, you know, short training session specifically geared towards EPDM because it is, you know, it's typically people haven't, you know, we find when they come in new, they haven't used uh, a PDM system before or they've used it, you know, a different one and, and we just, it's easy to take them through that process and show them how things work here um, and it's, it's standardized. So um, anybody that, um, you know, works here can train someone else in how to use the, the EPDM system, which is nice. You don't have to rely on one person uh, for that to happen. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, it's kind of nice because then it's tough to kind of get a bunch of people starting at once, right? You probably have one engineer at a time starting, right? I don't imagine. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. So then, uh, you know, a, a common reason why customers are implementing EPDM, of course, is to manage revisions. That's, uh, you know, I would say if I were to pick a number one, that would be it. Um, you know, I'm curious if you could just talk a little bit about how EPDM has impacted how you manage your revisions. Sure. Um, so the biggest thing, I guess, is to, you know, making sure everybody's on the same page with design, um, is using the latest and greatest. Um, and with a large team, um, you know, people coming in and out of projects, um, it's, EPDM makes it super easy to, to make sure that happens. Um, when we're in the you know, concept prototype phase, we, we use um, version control um, you know, that the EPM uh, provides just with check-in and check-out. Um, and then when we move on to uh, you know, production, you know, when we're releasing a manufacturer, um, then we get into a kind of a formalized revision control scheme with letters and numbers and things like that. Okay, cool. And it sounds, uh, you mentioned to me that, um, that you had revision control triggered by workflow, I think was the answer, but maybe you can explain, you know, just in a nutshell. Um, what's going on with, uh, or how you how you trigger a revision bump? Um, yeah, so um, revisions um, come in two two ways. When uh, when the products or designs released for manufacturing, we have a uh, I guess a, a major minor revision control scheme where uh, anything a minor revision control will be anything to change to a drawing. Uh, major revision will be anything that changes the design or the CAD model. Um, and that's controlled through the workflow, um, you know, automatically controlled through the workflow in EPDM. Um, and we have notification systems set up so that when people are, you know, submitting something for a revision bump, 
um, a manager gets notified, they can review it, um, approve it, or you know, um, turn it back with changes. Um, and uh, then the, the manager has to uh, you know, um, set it to uh, approved and then the file's locked. Once it's approved, it's locked and can't be edited unless it's unlocked or sent back to the editing editing um, state um, so that it can be edited again. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I know, I, I know in a little bit we have a screenshot of your workflow, so maybe we'll just uh, highlight a couple of those things uh, when we see that in a moment. Um, on the, you know, the next question, um, another common uh, request is about coordinating design teams together. Um, you know, how, maybe you can describe how EPDM has had an impact on that. Um, you know, or, or do you have, I guess a good question is, do you have um, multiple designers working on a project at once? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can have, you know, seven, eight people working on the same, same product, um, different parts of the assembly. Um, and like I said, it's important that everybody's working with the latest and greatest and to be able to share what they've done quickly and just you know, hit the get latest button and everything's updated um, automatically. Uh, we do have people that sometimes work on site at clients so they can be PN in and, and stay a part, you know, part of the team and up to date as well as working from home. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a real, you know, makes things really easy in terms of um, making sure everybody's always working with the, with the latest and uh, information because if you if you're not there's there's potential for uh, waste in your design around something that's not up to date um, and uh, you know we just we're delivering a service and a value um, so we have to make sure we're as efficient as possible when we do it. Okay, cool. Um, you know, going a, a lot of companies what they do as well. Um, is they go beyond just engineering data. So that's a very common request. Um, like the, I should say beyond the CAD data because there's much more to engineering projects than just CAD. Um, so I know uh, from the little bit we've been talking, it sounds like you guys have been using EPDM for quite a bit of documentation as well. Um, yeah. So I thought, yeah, I thought would be a cool thing to talk about is, um, you know, that what, I mean, that I guess the types of documents and templates that you have set up within EPDM, maybe you can kind of describe some of them that you're using. I think you have a couple examples we're going to go through as well. Um, sure. We'll talk generally about the ones that you have set up and then we'll go into some specifics. Okay. Um, so like I said before, we put um, every electronic document into EPDM. Uh, nobody keeps things in my documents other than maybe their personal you know, pictures or you know, um, personal projects. Um, so. Everything, um, Excel files, so you'll see some examples of here. We've got uh, PowerPoint files, design review reports. We've got drawing check sheets. We've got um, NCR forms, uh, file transfer forms, reports. Um, they're all inside EPAM, and they're all templated and automatically deployed. So you just you know, right-click, you hit design, you scroll down to the, the, the form you want, you click on it, and if, if it's been deployed from a, uh, a certain project folder, all the customer name, project number, project description gets ported into those forms automatically. Okay. And the file name also gets um, automatically created um, with a lot of that information that's pertaining to the customer and project. Very cool. And I think that the specifics, I think there was two that you uh, shared some screenshots um, with me. Um, so we have a file transfer and a purchase order. So maybe you can kind of describe yeah. specifically on the file transfer how that one works. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'll tell you what the file transfer is for. Anytime we have any kind of uh, design, drawing that leaves our, our office um, to a vendor or a customer, um, we send a, a file transfer form which basically says we are sending you these files, these file names, um, the origin, the, I guess the, the the source file name, um, because sometimes, oftentimes, we're either PDFing a drawing or um, creating an export file for a tool shop. Um, so we have to know where the you know, the original file was, and then the PDM version. Um, and the reason we do that is um, it's just again version control with with uh, tool shops, for example, um, when you're sending things out for. Um, for quotation, you send us, you know, you're not usually not quite ready to release it. I'm just trying to get some feedback on price. So that version is, you know, is what they quote to. When the design gets released, potentially the version could be incremented three or four from once you sent it out. So this file transfer form gets um, launched from, you know, the, the menu here. You can see 
Um, it automatically gets a, a transfer number applied to it. You can, uh, you can do a drop down from who to who, and all this gets automatically populated into the form. And then this goes into uh, an outgoing folder with the date, um, and then the files are the files that are sent out are put inside that outgoing folder, um, along with the file transfer. So we have a document record of what left the building, um, the file transfer, and the documents. Very cool. And there, uh, and this was a little bit of a unique one. I don't, I can't say that I've seen too many customers using uh, EPDM from the purchase order end of things as well. I thought it was kind of cool, so I thought it'd be neat to. Uh, Need to share as well. Sure. So um, we don't. Uh, we're, you know, we're we're predominantly a services company, and so the amount of products we're purchasing is, is relatively low compared to, say, like a manufacturing company. Um, so we don't have a um, uh, what do you call it um, um, MRP system or um, something that you would generate a purchase or we use QuickBooks. But a lot of times, the way our projects are led. The, the project engineer, project development engineer, is the one you know managing, leading, and, and doing the purchasing for their project. And so we created a purchase order template that's in Excel. Um, again, it gets launched you know, from inside EPM. It's assigned a purchase order number sequentially. Um, we've got a vendor pull down um, description, you know who who ordered it, and uh, which project number, and that gets uh, created. Uh, automatically, and then uh, indi you know, they, and they individually uh, enter all this information. Again, we're always keeping tracks of track of revisions and PDM versions. So there's traceability there. Make sure that the person when or the the vendor when they've created that part that they've created the right version of part. Because again, a lot there's a lot of files going back and forth. Could be revisions to files or you know versions that were quoted, but once it gets released, it's a different version. So we want to make sure that all these versions and revisions are captured on a thing, a document like a purchase order, because it basically is a contract for purchase. Okay, cool. Hey, before we move on, I thought that we'd um, we just do a one quick poll question. Um, I don't, I didn't want to make it heavy on the polls, but I just wanted to get a few people uh, logged in. Um, so I thought, uh, you know, just for everybody out there, I thought we'd launch a quick question and uh, curious about your experience with EPDM. So we do, uh, it's kind of funny that, you know, we, we originally launched this webinar thinking like this is a great opportunity to have a live reference for, uh, for customers considering uh, uh, EPDM. But I have a feeling that most people that came on here actually are, uh, are just looking for advice on EPDM that they already have set up, which is completely fine. Um, we're, we're happy to, uh, to help you guys out and, uh, and uh, you know, get some advice, I guess, from, from Ray here. So do uh, if you could fill that in and and uh, let us know whether you're involved and uh, um, it would be great. All right, so we're just uh, wrapping it up here. Almost everybody voted. Perfect. Thanks very much for the vote votes. Okay. Um, okay. So back to the the questions here. Um, so this is this is actually a very common one as well. Is on on the search. Uh, searching and finding. So I know uh, maybe you can describe the impact that searching um, or searchability in the database has had on, on inertia and maybe some advice to go along with that to, to make it as usable as possible. Sure. So um, yeah, um, the searching function is, is, is very powerful. Um, and the one thing we've done to make it extremely useful is the standardization of of file names. Um, again, like I said, you know, when we, we have different projects, so the project or any kind of uh, document that's created inside a project folder will get, um, um, will have a project number associated with it and um, also a standardized name. So if it's a design review um, document, it'll have the word design review in it. If it's a uh, weekly update, it'll have the word weekly update. So when it comes to to searching, you can you can you know, either enter in the customer customer name and uh, the name of the type of document you're looking for, um, and you can quickly find it. So the standardization of file naming is important, um, and so the automation you know, function and the templates that we've created and used within EPDM has allowed allowed that standardization to occur, so that when you go and try to look for a file. It's very quick because you have a few different ways of searching: customer, project, um, and file file name and file type. Yeah, very very good advice for sure. So the the templates and searching really go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, so that that makes a lot of sense. 
Do you, um, you know, just a little bit of a, a different, or I guess going back to some of the stuff we were talking about before uh, related to um, working out of the office. So you mentioned that uh, sometimes clients or your uh, designers work on site at customers at a BPDM. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, on site or at home, um, and it's uh, like I said, it's important to make sure everybody's always on the same page and uh, with with designs because uh, you know it's if there's one person on site, there could be five people back at the office working all working together on the same same design and uh, we've had situations where we've been you know, working through uh, presenting to clients, uh, talking about different design options and we'll message back to the company to have someone make a change and while we're online there we're at the, at the customers you know, talking through these options, you know, the change will come through um, you'll see the, you know, the, the PDM flag that there's a new version of that file, we'll just hit get latest and then you know, the newest version pops up on screen so we, you know Having that ability to have that speed, you know, of, of collaboration is, uh, you know, helps efficiency overall. But when you're in a situation like that where you can, you're at a customer's and uh, site and you're you're working in a meeting, you can have people working outside and, and have things updated, um, real time like that. It's pretty is a pretty powerful thing to to have. Yeah, that sounds like pretty phenomenal customer service to be able to have live updates during a meeting. So <laughs> don't even have to go back and think about it. Yeah. So, very cool. Um, and I know uh, like one of your recent achievements is related to the ISO certification. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that, that process. Yeah. So uh, I think in September we started uh, working towards getting our ISO certification and it took us about two months, which I guess is, is relatively quickly. Um, and um, I guess a lot of the... Um, Basically, when you when you do your ISO, you're formalizing your business processes, engineering processes, things like that. And uh, it was um, a lot of things we we're already doing, I guess, um, um, because of the work that we had done previously um, with EPDM. And so it uh, it was actually uh, a fairly smooth process, a lot uh, more smooth than I've seen it happen in, in other companies. Um, and I think EPDM had a part a part in that. Okay. Well, you're already answering my next question. It sounds like EPDM did help then. Um, so it sounds that, so because you had your processes standardized already, it was, you know, going through the ISO certification happened quite quickly, it sounds. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, things like uh, templates and automation to allow, you know, the standardization um, really helps because, you know, you have to have uh, forms and procedures and, uh, and records, and we were creating those um, because we had EPDM, because we had the automation and standardization already. Um, we had our change control processes already worked out um, using you know the the workflow and revision controls. Um, so we're already doing a lot of the right things. And really, what what it, uh, all, all we had to do was you know formalize and write down what our process was to become ISO compliant. Perfect. Um, you know, I know a big part of that, of course, is your processes. Um, so I did. Uh, I thought it'd be nice to share a screenshot of the the key workflow that you use within uh, within EPDM. Um, okay. Maybe you can spend a moment just describing, you know, the main part of the workflow that you that you use. And you you described to me the other day about um, about the major and minor uh, revisions. And maybe you can kind of explain where those come in into this process. Okay. So typically we'll be working uh, at the top here in the editing state. Um, that's where the files, you know, available to be edited by anyone. Um, once it comes, you know, when things get to the uh, production launch, um, the, uh, whoever's you know, working on the file or, or ready to release it, it will be submitted for review. And you see it branches off to the left and down in the reviewing state. At the same time, an update notification is sent to uh, the, you know, the design manager, engineering manager, um, to notify them, hey, this, there's a file here or a drawing uh, design that needs, that's ready for review. Um, at that time, they can either you know, approve it um, or put it back to editing uh, with comments to say, okay, this needs to be changed, that needs to be changed if there's drawing updates. And once it's in, re when it is in reviewing, um, it's determined at that time you know, what is, is it a major release or a minor release? And we've got, um, um, I guess, a letter number scheme for our revision control. So, um, say revision will be A1, 
Um, a stands for a major major revision. Um, that would be a change to the CAD model, a change to the, the product design. A minor revision would be, you know, go from A1 to A2. And that would be a, essentially a drawing change where we're changing notes, we're changing uh, maybe a tolerance, we're changing a material specification. So the person reviewing it will determine, um, you know, what kind of release it is and then uh, submit it for approval and then it, which will then drive the revision uh, increment to either the letter or number change. Perfect. Yeah, no, it, it's great to see this. And I, uh, when I saw this, um, I, def I got some ideas myself on on uh, some things that we can improve on some of the standards that we uh, we help clients with. So I appreciate you taking some time to share it. Sure. Um, so uh, I guess kind of a couple final uh, questions. You know, on setting up EPDM, um, you know, were there any challenges that you had? I know this is something that uh, that uh, everybody's probably curious about. That's uh, considering EPDM. Um, you know, at the, at the time, like I said, it was it was quite a while ago, and uh, it, it it went together fairly smoothly. You know, we we ended up just transferring all of our data into the EPDM, and and right away we're using it for collaboration mostly. Um, so I wouldn't say there was really any any challenges. Um, it was mostly you know for us to develop our own internal processes and methods to make full use of EPDM, and that's come. You know, over the years, with for us, um, of of in, just improving how we do our business. Yeah, but exactly. It was, it was, it was you know, having the folder structure similar to you know, uh, well, it, like Explorer. It was it was a bit of a no brainer. I mean, it just it was just you know, it was a different color filter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fair to say. So it sounds like things went pretty smoothly. Um, I know. It's, I know. Since you've implemented it, you've uh, like because of working with customers like yourselves and uh, you know the other couple hundred customers that are now using EPDM. Um, we've learned a lot over the time too. So I, I would have to imagine that uh, that uh, things are just going smoother and smoother with uh, customers that are considering it considering it in the future. Um, you know, I guess uh, as a final uh, thing, I'm curious, uh, or do you have any advice um, that you can give to anybody get it, considering EPDM that uh, that you think would be helpful? At, you know, if they're just going through that stage right now. Yeah, I think um, the one thing I would say is if you're if you are considering it, um, uh, take some time to think about how you, you know your internal processes and systems and methods, um, how how they currently work, or try to, to at least um, map out how they do work or how you would like them to work. Um, because that when, when you roll out EPDM, you can build in the part numbering systems, the workflow, um, revision control into EPDM right from the start. Um, we developed that, you know, kind of after the fact. And I, as I understand it, Eric, that Javelin's done, you know, has come a long way as well just to help people get started in, in that respect. Um, whereas when, you know, hmm. eight or nine years ago, <clears throat> we were, we were uh, figuring it out uh, as we went along ourselves. Yeah, I mean, there's there's different approaches on that front. Um, so we do have clients that go out of the gate to what they consider the most ideal process, and that uh, that definitely takes some planning. And we've been helping a lot of customers with that planning. Um, and then another way that customers have approached it as well is to is to break down a, a process to what is con what they consider the bare minimum. And uh, and sometimes that's a nice place to start um, because I always I find that it's always easier to make a process more complex in the future than it is easier to than it is to make a complex process simpler. Absolutely. So, um, you know that's just my two cents on the topic is uh, you know don't be afraid to start with a simple process um, combined with some of the manual work that you're probably already doing today anyhow and then as time goes on you might uh, bring in some additional steps and add some more automation and notification along the way. So. Yeah. Um, good. Well, you know that concludes the, the interview. Uh, you know, at, at this point, I guess uh, the the last thing to do is uh, is thank you. Uh, you know, I really appreciate you, Rach, spent, uh, sharing your experience with uh, with our existing EPDM customers and some of the new customers that are considering EPDM. Um, I did record this webinar as well, so I know um, I know this will be a valuable interview um, for customers considering it in the future, just to review and get some advice and and hear firsthand. How, uh, how some of the, the work is, is being done with any PDM and the impact that it's had on your business. It's been my pleasure, and I hope, hope there was something useful there for people to take away. Oh, I'm, I'm sure there was. There's lots, of, uh, there's lots of ideas that I, I took away, and I've been working with the system quite a bit, so I'm sure everybody online uh, picked up a, a thing or here, here or there. <laughs>